Okay, I show 702. Why don't we get started with a little bit of intro and give people a little more time to dial in to the uh, public hearing component. Um, welcome, everybody. I, it's the February 8th, 2021 Village of Red Hook Village Board meeting with a public hearing set for 7 p.m. on our police reform and redesign plan. Uh, just to repeat what we have to say each time at these meetings, it's been duly noticed and it's complying with the details as outlined in various executive orders. It's a remote <coughs> virtual meeting. Um, it's been posted and the links are out there. I was just, you might see me on the phone, it was one of our attendees trying to get the link and uh, I directed him to the website, so he should be on shortly. Uh, but before we get going, I'd just like to make sure what board members we have here, just we'll do a roll call for the clerk so we can know who's there and confirm their presence. So I'm speaking, so I'm certainly here. Uh, Mr. Kowalczyk, are you there? I am here. Ms. Norris. I am here. Mr. Lang. I am also here. And Mr. Noonan. I'm here too. Good. So the record can show we have all five of us, which is the whole board and, of course, constitutes a quorum. Um, like I said, we're going to do two things tonight. Um, Public hearing be one, and I'll be frank with you. Um, we've got it set for seven. I'd like to get started shortly. Since it is virtual, it falls into that same category. We have to comply with executive orders. Um, so what we'll do is the meeting will, is being recorded. Um, it's so everybody knows that up front. And what we're going to do too, another housekeeping piece is we have an administrative assistant working with us tonight. Mr. Chris Donahue is going to help with some of the technology on the uh, Ring Central part just so we can work with a large number of people that we expect in the public hearing format. As most of us board members know, usually we're in the room here where we can look out at the people and we have a sign in sheet and so forth. And I'll just state for the record right now those same rules will apply. Um, we have um, you know, normally a person would walk physically into the building, sign in and talk with us. A couple of precursor pieces of information about a public hearing. It's, it's really a situation where we would expect the public to have viewed the police reform document on our website in its latest draft form and then make comments to the board. It's not precisely like the workshops we've been having with the stakeholders where there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of ideas going back and forth. Um, it's really a forum for the public to comment on what they see, interpret, and read in the document, and the board listens. The board is not under an obligation to respond or answer any specific question on site tonight. Um, just so you know, that's sort of a formality of public hearings. And we can talk more about it in a minute, but as far as the protocols, um, we don't have a sign-in sheet. What we'll use is we're going to adapt things central where we'll ask people that want to speak to raise their hand. The administrative assistant will see them and then convey them to me and I'll open the dialogue or the conversation with them. Um, what we do is when recognized, we expect the person speaking to state their name and address. And then on top of that, um, we have some time limits just for the sake of getting through tonight and um, we have some more meetings scheduled on this of course but let's see so unless determined by the mayor the time allotted to each speaker is three minutes once all persons wishing to speak have spoken once any person wishing to speak a second time may do so for a maximum of two minutes and then importantly comments must pertain to the subject of the public hearing as far as we like to have decorum and we always have had it and even in our virtual sessions we request it and require it but just to point out we'll say no member of the public is permitted to speak during the public hearing unless recognized by the mayor all remarks should be addressed to the board and not to the audience all persons speaking will be given will be given respect and courtesy and in return are expected to be respectful and courteous the use of profane, slanderous, or inappropriate language and boisterous conduct is not acceptable. Since we're not in the same room, the boisterous conduct is a little bit different. Uh, it's uh, whatever the internet protocol is on that. So the, the, the ground rules, so to speak. Um, what I thought we I wanted to point out too is tonight is the regular monthly board meeting of the Village of Red Hook. So 
we do have other business to conduct tonight, which is for those who have seen other meetings, it's a department and committee reports and then new business that we have to work on to keep our village operating. Um, so we'll try to, you know, we'll see how many comments and timeline we'll play it by ear, but we do intend to keep this public hearing forum open until February 18th. We'll describe that more as we go into it. Um, and um, yeah, I'm presuming we go 45 to 60 minutes on a public hearing if we have that many people that want to speak. And uh, what I thought we'd do is just to, to frame some of what we're up to here as well. Um, like we said, on our website and in various other places is access to our current draft version of the plan. And the one we're working off is data draft February 5, which followed a bunch of uh, stakeholder meetings and other steps that the village worked with what was called the Dutchess County Collaborative for Police Reform. Um, I'm not gonna read the whole plan. I would expect folks to do that, but I wanna point out just so they can be the most familiar and ask the best questions or make the most points. We've essentially identified five theme areas and then within that 14 action items, um, we identified, you'll see on page, uh, page two is transparency and accountability. And with that underneath there, you see what we do currently and what our plan will be. Um, the next concept area is building trust through sustained relationships. Again, we have a plan section there. That's where you want to pay attention. Under equity, you same thing, a plan section. Clarity and accessibility of information. And then the future, we want to stress, and it's come up discussions with the stakeholders that although this plan is due to be filed with New York State by September, to me, um, April 1, we do not see it as the end of our process or the end of our work to have the best police department in, in the Dutchess County here. Um, so when we have that last section of our plan, the future, that's what we're talking about. We're, we're not going away at the end of March and uh, filing this thing away. And if you look, even within some of those 14 component items, not all of them can even happen by April 1st. They, they are gonna be projects we'll be working on for several months. Um, in the end, what the village is required to do is file with the state of New York a police reform and reinvention collaborative plan certification form. And I'll read a couple of sentences from that. Uh, we have to attest that the village has performed a review of comprehensive review of current police force deployments, strategies, policies, procedures, and practices. Um, if folks could honor some internet protocol and mute yourselves, thank you. Um, and what our goal is to consult with stakeholders and then groups such as the local office of the district attorney, local public defender, local effective, elected officials regarding the plan. And we've got all those done and underway, depending on the groups. And um, so this February 8th meeting is to, to get some public comment because to adopt that certification form the governor's office has indicated um, we, we have to affirm and confirm that we've listened to public comment. And just to repeat, some maybe new arrivals to the process here tonight, I'm not looking at every name on the participants, but we've worked with Dutchess County Police Reform Collaborative from the months of about August to December, 2020. Then when that was finalized, that their plan was helpful to the village of Red Hook because they have, significant layers of professional policy review people and access to larger police agencies that could help all the agencies in the county. Um, so we took that booklet, circulated that out to the board and the stakeholders, and from that we've been gleaning the actions we can take. And the driving force here has been that, especially in the year 2020, we had some horrible graphic illustrations or situations presented to us ranging from um, national events, fortunately nothing right here, super close to home, but we all saw the news and what we do, I cite that in the plan 
as the underlying basis for why we need to make sure all police departments are working as cleanly and properly as they can without any under underlying biases, whether it be racist or gender-based, whatever. And we also, in our plan, we would like to incorporate the bigger picture, not just policing, but what can Red Hook do? And that's in our future pages there too. We have some ideas what we can do as a village government and administration to, to broaden that, not just concentrating on police because what we're seeing in these, these matters is essentially what exists in our society. And once in a while it comes out when there's deadly use of force, especially in racially heated incidents. It's, um, it's, we're, we'd never want that to happen here. We're trying to get it so it doesn't happen here. And um, we've had some very, very good discussions uh, for the past, I guess, since early January. I think our first meeting was January 7th with the stakeholders. So I've said a lot just to sort of introduce things. Um, the meeting is formally open, but what we generally do is um, we have to open a separate public hearing. And even though it's about 7.13 right now, I would like to do that. Um, it's a formal step. I would move that the Village of Red Hook Board open its public, hear open its public hearing here on February 8th to deal with um, getting and gathering information from the public regarding the police reform and redesign project we're in the middle of. Is there a second on that? Second. Any thoughts, discussion? We're scheduled, we're ready to go. All in favor? Aye. 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 All five? Aye. Um, Okay, so we'll consider the hearing open. Like I said, if people, we have an administrative assistant hosting here. Um, it's essentially, we wanna hear comments from the folks on the connection here. So um, does anybody have their hand raised at the moment? Yeah, just to clarify, if everyone can go, um, if you wanna speak, just right into, um, it should be into participants. There should be a button to raise your hand um, and then that will stay until you have to lower your hand afterwards. So if anyone who wants to speak, just press that button once. Um, and then once you're done speaking, um, you can or I can just lower your hand again. Um, and then we'll be all set. Thank you, Chris. So for, I know we have a lot of high tech folks out there, but click on the participants button, what Chris is saying. Sure. In the bottom right of your screens, something will open up where you can see some choices to raise a hand. Do we have a hand raised anywhere? We do have Mercedes. I think that's our... Okay. Hi, how are you? Yes. Hi, Mercedes, thank you. Could you say your name and your address and give us what's on your mind? So my name is Mercedes and I don't want to feel like giving out my address, but I am a resident in the village of Red, Hawk, Red Hook. <laughs> and then you mentioned earlier that there's like five members on the police reform committee board do all five members reflect like what Cuomo has said in executive order 203 does it reflect one member from like like a person of color who's marginalized in this or like lgbtq community uh from that from that um community um is there anybody from the mental health committee on community on this call um you can briefly answer those three questions yeah well, like I said, I'll answer them, but this is not a Q and A. That would be, um, but it's an important question. So, you, when we said five village board members, that's the elected village board. Okay. The stakeholder group um, does include as many of those things that you just mentioned as we could get. We have um, members that are on the call right now. Um, the the requirement is, and I think I read that loud, the village has consulted with stakeholders, including, but not limited to, membership and leadership of the local police force, members of the community, with emphasis in areas with high numbers of police and community interactions, interested nonprofit and faith-based community groups, the local office of the DA, the local office of the public defender, and local elected officials. So we do feel, yes, we have all that. We also have the benefit of on the countywide level, um, multiple agencies consulted and worked with the county collaborative, which the Village of Red is, is a part of. So we have hit all those buttons, yes. And it's importantly, yes, we have.
Thank you. Who else would like to raise right. your hands? We have David um, as our next one. Hey, David, you're on. Hey, Ed. Hey, thank you, uh, Ed, and the stakeholders and the board for um, addressing this issue. I think it's really important. Um, and I think I'm just going to say a few things about transparency here. I, I prepared something. I'm going to read that. Okay. Uh, I just want to say I have no, I have no reason to believe that, that um, RHPD is not addressing these um, policies and disparities, but I would not know because there's nothing really published for the community to see. Um, and I, I'm going to talk about that for a minute. Um, I reviewed the working document and I, I do have a few things to say. I, I believe that there should be regular reports posted to the public that outline the steps that the RHPD is taking whether it be policy training, demographics data, or audits to show that the public and the RHPD is doing. Uh, I do not see specifics on this in the current plan, and I would like to see that outline. Um, in order to maximize the RHPD's understanding of issues within the community, there needs to be a detailed process for accepting comments, issues, and complaints from the community that makes all members feel comfortable coming forward with any issue that they have. This process needs to be published to the public so everyone knows what the process looks like and feels comfortable coming forward. This is crucial for without it, how does the RHPD and the Village of Red Hook know that they are catching all of the issues that may fall under their purview in the community? In order to achieve these goals effectively and without overwhelming an already tightly staffed department, I am in favor of an intermediate community body with a diverse group of residents to be formed. In the, village, in the published village plan, I see this under future. I strongly, I feel strongly that in order for this body to be successful, it needs to have the mandate and authority to develop reports, access policy information, recommend and follow up on policy items, and package information for the public. Transparency is the best way to show the community that steps are being taken. Publishing official policies, plans, and reporting progress are the best way to convey this information. At the very least, the public should be able to look up the body cameras, use of force, duty to intervene, and bias training policies. But ideally, there would be a two-way flow of information that is much more comprehensive. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you, David. Just so everybody knows, I'm making notes, so is everybody else probably. And then... Um, like I said, it is being recorded, so we can go back if we need it. Um, who else has a hand up, Chris? Um, currently, I do not see any other hands up. Um, I do see another one from Mercedes now, yes. Is it possible for like Red Hook PD to like host like a Know Your Rights seminar so people in your community know exactly what their rights are when they are pulled over by like Red Hook PD? Like stemming from when they're in high school and then like also like into like, like in the community setting as well? Okay. Just to provide uh, that transparency. Okay. Like I said, um, I'm making notes, taking notes. Thank you. All right, and then I see Stephanie too. Stephanie, go ahead. Yeah, I don't have anything really to add. I just want to um, add my support. Um, and I, I, I appreciate both of their, um, their, their points. And I think that a regular um, flow of information, two-way flow of information, as David said, and also a um, information sharing sort of any seminars or anything like Mercedes was saying those are two ways that I think be really great to mitigate um, potential harm um, and also create um, a, a, a community that is that 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 hopefully feels safer and, and more um, heard okay just one question Stephanie um are you a village, town? I'm not trying to be specific, but just for our record, a village resident or a town of resident? Town. Okay, thank you.
All right. And now I do see uh, Charlie with his hand up. Charlie Lang? Oh, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie Rubin. Oh, Charlie. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yep. yep. Hey, Charlie. Hi, Ed. Hey. Um, well, I just had a couple of comments, just be a moment. I haven't been involved from the beginning, so please forgive me if I'm not up and maybe all the things I'm mentioning are already covered. <clears throat> but I did go through the uh, um, proposal yesterday. And I just had a couple of quick thoughts. It seemed like it, well, there, there are three thoughts I had were what, um, number one, would it be possible to proactively hire minority officers? I don't know if that's been discussed or not. The second thought was, would it be possible to make public the names of the police officers like everyone else in the village, all the village boards, you know who's on them, but for some reason it's very hidden as to who the police officers are, as far as I can tell. Again, maybe I'm just missing it. Um, and the third and maybe most important thought I had was, uh, is it possible to have a civilian oversight board that has some real teeth and can actually investigate issues with the police and can actually fire officers if need be uh, and gets you know like mm -hmm. weekly briefings from them instead of it just being the village board or just the mayor who's in charge of the police to be more of a more community involvement. Those are basically my my ideas. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Like I said, tonight it's more listening, but we we did talk about many of these um, in earlier sessions. But yeah, like I said, I know I'm, I know I'm coming in late, but I just want to say those I thought were important points to consider. We'll re we'll review them again. Thank you, Charlie. Okay. All right, and I see. One other hand, uh, Mercedes with her hand. Mercedes, what can we do for you? <laughs> We're gonna be best friends. Um, Red Hook, are like, are you mainly accepting input from people who mainly speak English, or what about other people from other who speak Spanish and other languages? How are you reaching out to them? Good question. We have reached out through a few different venues. Um, if you look at our website, we have. The announcement for this meeting in Spanish. And, um, I believe uh, one of our stakeholders groups circulated the Spanish translation of the plan. Maybe one of them can confirm that. We were pushing that. And if it's not done yet, it'll the Spanish translation will be out there. But they're key. Our demographics, we do show a significant amount of Hispanic Latinx folks in the community. And um, is a special place with us and we are trying to get the message to them yes is there like a survey that's going on within like your police department where you where people in like your community can voice like how they feel about their police department and you know their opinions and you know how they feel and then maybe you can develop like a streamline of communication with them so like their opinions are like valued throughout this executive order 203 process Writing your statement down, and but yeah, we we are working with when we interpret what we need to do. Um, Mercedes, you've had the floor three times. If somebody else has their hand up, thank you. Yes, we do. We have uh, Dr. Kahan Sablo. Oh, Dr. Sablo. Uh, yes, uh, just a previous point that I've brought up is just to allow. The citizens an opportunity to um, how will we get data if there's an ongoing hoop I can't stress that enough others have said that so I won't re harp on the importance of that but an opportunity to collect unbiased unfiltered data from the citizens whether that be survey is there a plan to solicit that I think these forums are nice but people are going to be reluctant to speak up in public we heard one person not mention their address today I'm aware of others who are um, we're going to help at the, at the college. I'm, in, I'm administering a survey sometime this week regarding um, perceptions with the Red Hook Police, but I, I'm, I'm just wondering, is there a more system, a systematic way throughout um, the town to get feedback from, from its residents? And then that's a question. That's, that's not a... I'm sorry, what's the last part, Khan? So it's more of a question is how can the citizens be 
be uh, that, that we're responding to actual feedback or data from the community versus perceptions. Like in these meetings, I've heard a lot of we do this, we're nice, and so on and so forth, which is all fine and, and very well true. But is there a methodical way of getting feedback from the community, from the stakeholders about their experience, perceptions, thoughts, ways to improve, or things that they lack well? Is there a systemic way of annually doing that so that we can benchmark? and then kind of compare how we're doing from year to year in these areas that may or may not have shown up as a current So I guess I'm asking for a real structured way of measuring progress and soliciting feedback. Well, like we said tonight, we're taking comment and I would say in the plan, there is a section that deals with enhancing our data collection. Yes, so we're taking notes tonight as well. Thank you, Don. Perfect. And then we have a raise hand from C uh, Cecilia. Cecilia? Hello, Cecilia. Does she have to unmute herself? I just, I, I tried to uh, unmute her, but I still don't hear anything. So I'm not sure if it was done by accident, the hand thing. Um, but we can try to go back to her. I know uh, Charlie Rubin has his uh, hand up again, so we can go to him first. Okay. Cecilia, we couldn't hear you. We're not ignoring you. Can you, um, looks like Cecilia is back on mute from what I can see. Um, if somebody wants to text or chat, Cecilia. Um, anybody else that didn't go yet besides Charlie? Chris, any hands up? Um, right now, I don't see any other hands other than those two. Charlie, you can have your follow up. What's up? Okay, actually, this is Anne here with me. So actually, she's the one oh. who wanted to speak. Ah, okay. Hello, Anne. <laughs> Hi there. Um, she can't see you. They can't oh, see us. Oh, they can't see me. So uh, my question was, um, and I, I haven't been following it either, so this may have already been discussed, but, um, uh, you know, alternatives to calling the police for uh, mental health crises, um, things like this. You know, other, other communities are, are looking at uh, other types of assistance and intervention that um, don't necessarily involve the police. Um, so I just was, I, I, I wanted to bring that up. Mm -hmm. And also, um, has uh, has anyone in this group contacted the school district to see you know how the relationship also with the, the police and the local school and um, you know shed to shed some light on that in the community as well because I, I think so far that's just been between the school and the local police force and um, you know if it, it, it might be an area where there could be more light shed and more communication and information about that, especially for parents who have kids in the school district. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ann. Uh, if I could just really briefly say that I really agree with Dr. Sablo. It took a certain amount of like getting up your nerve to come to this meeting, even for me as a white male. So if we could somehow canvas other people who wouldn't be willing to go to a meeting like this, and get more input from the public. I think that's a, a great idea. That's all. Yeah, I don't know, is there a hand up? I, if I could just, I know on September 2, 6, the day comes to mind, we did have a community-wide forum hosted by the Human Rights Commission of Dutchess County where people got to call and that's part of our record and it drove some of the seeking process of concepts we wanted to address in our plan we did see certain keywords, certain key concepts coming up. And one is this underlying reticence or reluctance or fear or whatever. Unfortunately, I, we don't want that to be in existence in Red Hook and that's one of the things we're doing here. Um, it's, it's not the way we operate as a village administration and um, I'll make that clear and neither do our police, but it's something we're, this plan has to battle with and work with. It's, I think the underlying, one of the main underlying issues here. All right, and I think we do have uh, Cecilia back with our working microphone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, 
So I heard in the, the last meeting that it was mentioned the web page of the department of, of the police department. And I have some suggestions to have in the uh, web page. Uh, my first suggestion is have um, uh, having like uh, instructions how to make a complaint, for example, through the Division of Human Rights. Um, that would be one of my suggestions because it's intimidating to go and complain to the police department. Um, the other is, I think Mercedes had a great idea, like if, if, the, if the police department can't promote Know Your Rights uh, trainings for people, would be uh, like a sign that they have good faith and they want to, um, you know, like go so, do something different to educate um, the town. And other thing is that um, I would like to see some instructions on how to um, how to ask for certain information from the department, but also ex in in that um, page or whatever it should be explained what are the stages, like when you are uh, you are going to expect uh, an answer, for example. Um, other thing is that if people that doesn't speak English are invited to these kind of meetings, it would be, um, I mean, it would be nice to have an interpreter in Spanish because in, in, otherwise it's not worth it. Um, and other thing is the web page could be in English and Spanish would be great. Mm. Um, and I think uh, to have a survey again in the web page or a survey in general to ask the people how they feel about the police department uh, would be a good step. Um, my other comment is about all the trainings that the police department are taking. Maybe they would, it would be good if they are receiving these trainings from organizations that work with the minorities that they want to work with. Um, that way they are going to receive like another point of view. And um, I think it would be good for them and for everyone. Um, and also I want to see like something that talks about confidentiality when you make an, um, a complaint. Uh, I think it's really important that people feel comfortable, and um, that's that. I this I, all that I have right now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Cecilia. I'm writing the last note here. Um, yeah, the Spanish speakers. One thought. I don't know if you could be impressed upon the volunteer, but we anticipating do one, doing one more session. February 18th, um, it, we have one police officer that speaks Spanish and Portuguese. Um, I'm thinking for the meeting, let's, let me think about that, what we could line up for something. Thank you though, thank you. Anybody else with a hand up? Yes, we do have uh, Stephanie again. Stephanie Porto? Mm -hmm. Stephanie, you're on. Hi, yeah, um, I just wanted to make a suggestion about these potential committees, um, if we can add um, outreach to local social justice organizations that are organizing on their own and that are following and attending all these meetings, like if there's open um, availabilities on these committees, these potential committees that are being uh, proposed, like reaching out to them as well. Um, I also wanted to follow up on what Cecilia uh, was saying and just suggest um, uh, as well to like, you know, public um, interfacing on how to make a complaint and like what the, what the next steps could be um, around that. Um, so just more, you know, community discussion and transparency. Okay. Thank you. All right, perfect. And we do have another hand. I don't want to butcher the name. I, uh, Mel Corka. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We know Mel Corca. <laughs> Hi, I just wanted to tell other people that maybe were not present at the other um, workshops that all the videos of the workshops are on the village website. So if you are interested in seeing what actually was discussed, that's a great place to go. Um, because I, I do think, you know, there are some things that we really got into and some things that we maybe didn't cover and it'd be good to, if you're interested, they're good to watch. Thank you. And for your additional entertainment, Panda did put them up. I've seen them on Panda TV 23, which is distributed, na not nationwide, excuse me, um, community-wide through, uh, if you're a Spectrum, uh, Spectrum customer, Spectrum is an internet phone company. I don't know if anybody in town gets all that, but they're the village's only and uh, sole internet provider. So, uh, and TV provider, so uh, it is out there on Panda too. But it is like she, like McCorka said, it's up in our website with a link. All right, and at the moment, I do not see any other uh, hands raised. Okay. Well, I can talk for a minute. This is important um, information. What we envision. A, some people may feel uncomfortable speaking or stating in a public forum something. Um, so we do have the ability, we'll circulate it on our website too, but the village clerk who's on the call, who's a very nice person, she has a direct email. It's called info at redhooknyvillage.org. What we've asked her to do, and we'll push this out to the public, if you want to make written comment, that's the secondary reason we're keeping this open until February 18th. Um, you can feel free to write in. Um, it goes to her. She'll create a subfolder. She'll circulate that out to the board, the elected board members, and it would hold the same weight and value as a spoken comment here tonight. And um, we'll be looking at them as they come in, and they'll be saved and stored and so forth. So, Could again, you please repeat that email? Because there's sure. some confusion in the chat. Okay. And we'll make it more clear with our colleagues and stakeholders and so forth, but it's the simple word info, I N F O, at redhooknyvillage.org. Okay, perfect. And then we have uh, Dr. Uh, Sablo again. Okay, Kahan, Dr. Sablo. Uh, just in response to what you just said, it wasn't my original point. Okay. I would suggest um, info at Red Hook would not make me feel comfortable submitting to that because I don't know where that's I don't know where that's going. I know I <clears throat> sometimes I have sound troubles with my computer. Um, if there could be an email specifically created to discuss police concerns, asking someone who's had. Uh, an uncomfortable situation with an officer to respond to an info at Red Hook that would just concern me. I could see some some hesitance mm -hmm. to uh, reporting to to an email like that. It would be just one suggestion that I would make versus, mm -hmm. you know, police concerns or something at redhook.com or, or whatever, just something a little bit more specific. So it's not just you want to be known who's going to be getting this that has access to my name and stuff would be a big concern that I would have about um, responding to, if I, if I were making a complaint, I don't know that I would feel comfortable saying info, info at Red Hook. Oh. So I just offer that compared to, to mm -hmm. what it was that you just shared. Um, my, other cons my other question was, is for the group that's going to be meeting ongoing, who, who will be, is there an idea of who you're inviting to that and what will the scope or authority of that be? So if we, we're coming up with issues that are a little more contentious, having been the Two of these, we've had some heated moments in these meetings. Uh, just where where is the authority of that group, and and how are you reaching out to those members in the in the event that there are some challenging issues? I, I'm just curious what the vision is that you have for that. Well, two thoughts. Um, even though this is supposed to be more listening, I think it's worth responding. Khan, on the info email thing, that's not designed to take complaints. 
it's designed to act as a written comment forum for this public hearing. So it's for people to write about their thought, input, ideas on the plan, like we're hearing the verbal ones. We're not really hearing police complaints tonight. We're here, we're looking to get comment on the plan that we've developed. Um, so that's that. Yeah, it could be an outcome that one of our struggling points or struggle points is how does one get the complaint process to work where the complaining person feels comfortable? And that's in our plan where we deal with that, at least one area I can think of where that's, we have some ideas on how to do that. So just to repeat that info is not really to say I was, something happened to me. It's more, I've read the plan. I would like more thought put on this concept or whatever the, the idea that you want to convey to us, which is, we're getting some really good suggestions here tonight from the public input. Um, on your second point, um, in Village World, we have an election coming up here in March 16th, so whatever that is, five weeks. Um, we have envisioned some change in the Village Board. In April, in Village Life, we reorganize um, by rule and by law, where we reappoint committees. This committee does not exist at this point. Um, so comments Cecilia made and other people made and yours now, they'll all be taken into when we do this. Um, I think Stephanie followed up to, she mentioned reach out to social justice groups. And that's right now in our plan, that's what we envision this committee being a broader overall social contract committee, not specifically a police committee. But that'll be, like I said, there's a few things that are gonna happen in normal natural village administrative and election life that it's going to happen so all right and then we do have a hand raised uh from david markison okay um just want to point out on the website it says um red hook village info at red hook village and that is bouncing back. And you mentioned it's Red Hook Village NY, Red Hook NY Village. Yeah. Um, and that yeah. hasn't bounced back. So if, if you want people to submit comments, the website needs to be corrected. What are you reading on the website? Sorry. On, on, so redhookvillage.org page slash 173 slash police department where, where, you, where it says public comments or a vital part of this pro process. It says submit com comments in writing to info at redhookvillage.org. Okay, well that's not good. Yeah, you gotta, um... so bear with me, David. So you're- No problem. I, I think that needs to be corrected yeah, if let me, that's not the correct let me email. where you are, because it's probably picking it up from somewhere else. So it's probably, so um, you're on the police department page? Yeah. Yeah. Department, Okay. So let I think that needs to be you know fixed so people can can issue their their comments, especially if you accept are anticipating comments to happen you know in between these two meetings. Um, and the other thing I just want to reiterate, um, I think that uh, whatever group is formed really needs to have some authority and mandate to do some of this work and to to make this conversation with the public. Um, be fruitful. Um, otherwise, we're not doing the service that that this executive order is asking us to do. And that's my comment. That's it. Thank you. You will. We'll work on your uh, that address is not it's not correct on the website. I think that might be something we, we provided some info. We'll check that out. Thank you. Um, anybody else have a hand up? Yes, we do have uh, Cecilia. Yeah, and my last comment is if there is going to be a public hearing in the 18, uh, please consider not to ask people for their addresses. It's very intimidating, <laughs> talking about intimidation. Well, let me be clear about that. It's one of the balancing or touch points of this whole discussion. Um, in our normal, public hearing process, it is a step. We're not looking for any punitive or enforcement reason. It's just two things. This is a project working on improving, reforming, redesigning the Village of Reddick Police Department. So 
we do need to get a sense of who is from within our jurisdiction, who is from within the areas we serve, whether it be the schools or the town. Um, but it's it's a requirement of a public hearing process. It's not um, we do it if we're changing a zoning law or anything we do. It's not meant to intimidate anybody. And um, but thank you, Cecilia. I think what I'd like to do is um, talk with the village board and everybody. It's 7:45. Like I mentioned, many of us need to get into the regular meeting. Everybody's welcome to stay. But um, if there's, um, I would move that, as we've indicated, that the village keep the public hearing open till February 18th, as has been our long stated plan. Um, we will accept written comment at that info at redhooknyvillage.org. Um, we apologize for the confusion Dave found on the one website. Um, we'll correct that. But in the form of a motion, um, I'd like to. We're not closing the public hearing, we're extending it, but we have to move on to regular business. So since we're temporarily adjourning it until we will keep it continuing and open until February 18th. Um, and we'll take more comment at that meeting and in the intervening 10 days, written comment. And um, I'd offer that in front of a motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion from the board or anything? I know we all made a lot of notes, so we have to move on. So um, I'll call a vote just so I can get it clear for the record. Uh, I'll vote yes. Mr. Kowalczyk? Yes. Mr. Lang? Yes. Ms. Norris? Yes. And Mr. Noonan? Noonan, you out there? Well? Yes. You vote yes? Okay. Okay. Motion carried. So the public hearing piece will end for tonight only so we can move on. Folks that want to leave us can jump off. Folks that want to hear more about the nitty gritty operations of the village can stay with us and I'll switch folders here for a minute. I suppose um, Candy will keep recording. Chris, do you want to give me back host? And, um, yeah, I'll do that right now. Right. All right, I think that should have worked. So am I back in uh, the driver's seat here? Thank you, Chris, for helping with any technical things that worked, worked their way in. Fortunately, it didn't seem like they did. It's, um, all right, so I'll keep the meeting going here. Chris, if you leave, it's not going to kill the meeting, so... Uh, no, I don't think so. We can use one more, and Ken will keep us going. Let's switch folders here. Thanks to those that were on the committee that want on the uh, the listening group that want to leave. You can leave now, and we'll pull out the regular meeting. <coughs> Okay, so we'll open the formal part of our meeting. Um, again, it's February 8, 2021. We just did a first part of a public hearing on police reform and redesign project. Um, <coughs> as is our custom, I thought we just take a pause for a moment and um, before we open the formal meeting, just take a moment of silence for frontline response workers, frontline medical workers, and the more than 460,000 folks that have died from COVID so far in the past year. So if we just take a moment of silence in their honor and respect. Okay, thank you. Item number one, we circulated minutes for January 7, January 11, and January 21. Series of meetings. Seventh was our main monthly meeting and 11 and 21 were the workshop dialogue sessions that we mentioned. Um, I reviewed them and had them circulated out to you all digitally. I'd ask if there's any other additions, alterations, or corrections. Hearing none, I would move that we accept those minutes as circulated. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Toll was on the call. I know. Um, 
Our treasurer, are you out there, sir? I'm here, yes. Well, good, okay. You ready to work? So in terms of the uh, treasurer's report for um, February the 8th, 2021, the account balances as of the end of January in the general fund, it's $476,085.28. The water fund, $195,647.40. Trust and agency, $21,136.67. Uh, petty cash, $24.50. Uh, Village Green, $4,717.92. Hard Scrabble, $2,276.85. Health Insurance, $3,848.44. Sewer Fund, $21,091.53. And uh, there's nothing in the uh, Capital Fund. Uh, in terms of the reserve checking balances, <clears throat> the Fire Department, $5,030.79. Police, $14,577.76. USDA, $133,965.32. Highway, $20,776.27. Snow, <clears throat> Snow Reserve, $3,279. Tower Reserve, $17,708.76. Unemployment, $4,543.45. Court Reserve, $3,298.10. And the Office Reserve, $972.38. In terms of the total monthly expenses for the month of January, uh, the general fund was $229,645.64. Uh, the main expense in the general fund uh, were the ERS and PFRS payments to the New York State and local retirement system of $126,205. That's one of the reasons why this number is um, comparatively large compared to other months. Uh, in terms of the water fund, uh, the monthly expenses were $12,501.98. Uh, trust and agency, $1,396.88. And the sewer, uh, $39,111.79. And the main part uh, uh, payment for the sewer fund but were uh, with regards to the preliminary design uh, to uh, some engineering firms. Uh, so that uh, concludes the uh, treasurer's report for February the 8th. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, Ray and I stay in touch quite a bit. Um, it looks like everybody got in and got the voucher signed, so we're good. Um, I move that we accept the treasury report as submitted on the February 8th data sheet. Is there a second? Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Ms. Norris, Aye. you good? Mr. Noonan? Yes. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Mr. Lang, good. Right. Hi. Good. All right. Thank you. Well, we're in the treasurer report. I've been working on the new budget model, and um, that's the subject. I think our February 25th meeting is uh, going to be dealing with budget in that, that cycle. All right. Um, I go next. Looks like first off is the monthly police report total for the month of January 2021, um, showing incident total 430, breaks out 340 in the village of Red Hook, 90 in the town of Red Hook, none in the village of Tivoli. We had 113 traffic tickets issued in the month. The village of Red Hook had 82. Uh, there were no parking tickets, and there were 31 in the town of Red Hook. So arrests totaled 14. That was the breakout of nine in the village and five in the town of Red Hook. And we have the 
attached detail sheet that we talked about many times in the project here. Looks like we could jump to uh, Mr. Noonan. Do you have your uh, zoning and planning department reports there? Yes, I do. Why don't you tell us what they say? Okay. <clears throat> so the building permits issued were five. Uh, certificates, no certificates of occupancy were issued. Uh, certificate of compliance, four. Municipal searches, four. Uh, orders to remedy, zero. Stop work order, zero. Court appearances, zero. Fire inspections, eight. Complaints, zero. Um, the planning board met on January 14th and discussed signage approval. Signage approval was granted uh, in two uh, locations, both on South Broadway. The Zoning Board of Appeals met on January 28th, um, and that was for public hearing set for interpretation and variance uh, application for uh, 28 Prince Street. And that was set for February 25th, 2021. I don't have um, a financial breakdown of. Okay, I have that here. Um, sync, syncs up with the building inspections, fire inspections that you report in your, your list there. Uh, the, in, the revenue developed from those were, was $2,098 even. So, um, Again, that's something we use in our budget projections and so forth. Thank you, Will. You're welcome. Why don't we go to um, Trustee Norris and her, her piece of night here. <coughs> you ready to go, Jen? I am. Okay. okay, uh short and sweet materials management for the month of January we sold three thousand one hundred eighty dollars in garbage tags and paid out six hundred eighty three dollars and fifty one cents We had six point three two tons of garbage and three point oh seven tons of recycling, which breaks down as follows point four five of cardboard one point three four of newspaper and one point two eight tons of commingled um and then events, I have no idea. <laughs> um, we have emails going back and forth about Apple Blossom Day <coughs> and other stuff, and I don't know. So we're kind of in limbo. Um, yeah. But I mean, a lot of these events, I, I think I said this last meeting, take a lot of planning. So even if everything was, you know, we don't have a crystal ball, so we don't know what September is going to look like, but Hard Scrabble's like a 10 month planning period. So, you know, do you risk it? Do you not? Do you, you know, last year we did a kind of a virtual thing. Do you do that? I mean, it's, so it's a lot of things up in the air with, um, with events, but Lord knows we could use some merriment, but we'll, no. we'll see, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Just thinking about it gets you excited, right? Some okay. community, community fun, outside music. Um, yeah. Thanks, Jen. Uh, somewhat in the materials management world, our colleague, Enterprise Red Hook Responds is doing a conference tomorrow on Ring Central with regard to community gardens and um, backyard gardens, barred farm, and um, I think some of the private farms are somewhat interested in getting something going. And Jen and all of us recall years ago, we were looking at that in uh, probably, what, six or eight years ago, we were looking at a community garden concept idea, you know, would we put it on Abrams Park mm -hmm. or different places? Um, so we'll give it another life cycle attempt. Um, I think it could fit in, especially with COVID. I think people found new enterprises to keep themselves busy in their houses and their yards. So uh, could be good. So that's happening tomorrow. If you go to Red Hook Responds, uh, they'll have something. We've been, at, um, we've been having some discussions about music for hard scrabble, but like Jennifer said, um, traveling in a band and things we just can't predict. And for even September, who can know, can they fly in? Can they stay in our you know, Red Hook Inn, that kind of stuff. Um, but we'd love to do something. It may be, last year you might recall, we did those Friday night music events in the warm weather and they were not big ticket bands or expenses, but they're fun and they complied with COVID under 50 gathering sizes and 
you gave the same sort of energy to the village center, but you weren't getting your world class rock and roll. Um, but it was it. And just another thing, a little bit of bragging. I guess I, I don't know if we could tell anybody before the inauguration, but um, our local fire company, fire company, our local sound <laughs> company, Firehouse Productions, did the um, the sound for the inauguration. So I think the, the acts you saw and so forth, uh, some red guys scampering around in black clothes and in the shadows of the Lincoln Monument, so they wouldn't stand out in the camera shots. But uh, they did um, the sound. It's pretty amazing. And um, we have talked about the other things they're doing with fake crowd noises at NHL and NBA and different games. So they're entrepreneur types who are just finding a way to make money, and maybe we'll have them help with our little summer sound again. They helped last year. It made some of the bands sound really great. Well, thanks, Jen, and yep, appreciate that. Mr. Trustee Lang, you want to talk water? And uh, I guess. Yes, I would be happy to talk water. Oh, that's the wrong one. There's that. Uh, just give me a second. Sure. I don't have it in hard copy. Okay. Uh, you can hunt digital, and if you get stuck, I can. I have it in front of me in hard. So. Um, here we go. Uh, yes, so for the month of January, the water treatment facility treated 11,509,700 total gallons. Uh, so that's an average of 371,300 gallons a day, which is pretty high. I mean, that's the highest it's been over the past 12 months. And we were already seeing elevated uh, volumes you know, basically sort of lagging uh, COVID. Um, so uh, I, I don't, I assume that doesn't take into account the, the water main break because that was just into February, correct? Yeah, that was Tuesday a week ago. Yeah, so that would have been February 2nd, yeah. Right, um, so um, we'll, we'll see what happens with uh, this month's report. Um, we also had uh, three bacteriological samples sent out um, and they all came back clean, uh, absent uh, for coliform and E. coli. So that's always good news. And then chemical usage uh, during the month of January, the water treatment plant used 95 gallons of sodium hypochlorite. So that's an average daily use of 3.06 gallons per day. Um, so that's the basic report. I mean, I have the daily volumes here and, you know, it's just, you know, consistently high with some peaks up into the high 400s. No, no, no. There were a couple of days where it was over 500. Um, so we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, it's showing that same weird inconsistency, like... Yeah, yeah, some, some say, um, variation. January, Jan day. January 3rd, 243,000 gallons. And then on um, 24 January, 553. And then she drops down to 322. Three, it's, it's What we are doing, uh, actually today, one of the things we talked about last meeting, I think, was we're putting a new backflow preventer right in the pump house itself. We changed out our main master meter at the pump house thinking maybe we just had incorrect figures being con conveyed to us from the main meter. Now we're putting in a backflow prevention valve to make sure we're not getting a little measurement of the same water twice, so to speak. So uh, as I understand, that was going in today. So um, we'll see what's going on with the numbers. Yeah. Uh, pretty soon we're gonna have to do, um, Charlie right now is reporting a water department, but just a reminder to everybody out there in the audience, we are now also as of January 1 in the sewer business when the village took over ownership and control of the existing sewage treatment plant behind Red Oak Commons. Uh, we'll deal with in a regular business, we'll get more into that. We've been working on some ideas and solutions and we're gonna come up with something on that today. Um, but thank you, Charlie.
Thanks. Looks like our next piece of regular committee department report is from Mr. Deputy Mayor Kowalczyk. Are you ready to go? I think you have to unmute. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. I am ready to go. All right. Not that safe. You got to do your work first. Um, so, all right. Village Green Committee, first month to report um, current balances of the Village Green Committee's related budget accounts as of January 31st are as follows. Community beautification, we have $3,372. Shade tree contractual. We have a negative 3,100 in the Village Green Committee checking account, $4,712.92. There were no Village Green Committee meetings held during the month of January. Uh, the Tree City USA application has been prepared by David Pearson and Brenda Cagle. And the application I signed actually yesterday and it's been scanned off to Albany and um, this will be our 19th year. Hopefully they accept our application as a Tree City USA. On the highway monthly reports, the village's snow ordinance is currently in effect through March 31st. No parking is permitted on village streets from 11 p.m. to 6 o'clock a.m. and on New York State highways, which are Route 9 and 199 from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. during the same period. When snow and ice removal operations are underway, any vehicle parked or abandoned on any street may be removed by or under the direction of the Red Hook Village Police Department or any responding law enforcement agency. And all costs associated with vehicle touring and storage will be charged to the vehicle's owners. And the owner and occupant of every building or lot in the village within the adjoining sidewalk shall remove snow and ice within 24 hours of a snowstorm. Those who have sidewalks, um, I feel your pain. It's been a lot of snow. Uh, at the discretion of the village board of trustees, the village highway department may remove snow and ice left uncleared at a cost of $2 per linear foot. And this cost will be assessed and collected with the next tax cycle. And the village did receive the latest consolidated highway improvement program, chips, apportionment balances from the New York State DOT. And just to go over this quickly, we have under chips a total balance of $88,346.41. Under the Extreme Winter Recovery Program, $21,550.44, which gives us a total balance for our Consolidated Highway Improvement Program, portioned to the Village of Red Hook at $109,896.85. And the amounts of these programs, according to New York State, may be subject to a reduction of up to 20% contingent upon revenue impacts directly related to the COVID-19 pandemic. And no revenue was generated from the scale, sale of scrap metal during the month of January. Total revenue for this fiscal year is $3,092.80. So we actually came in about $1,000 over from what we had anticipated and since September of 2007 when we started the scrap metal recycling program we have generated $34,544.92 and the proceeds from this program do go toward the purchase of tools and equipment for the village highway water and materials management department anyone interested in donating scrap metal can contact the highway department or the village clerk's office and the highway department will assist by picking up scrap metal upon request. Uh, sewer, this is the task force and the red infrastructure projects. I'm not gonna read all this stuff, but there's a lot going on right now. Um, we did have meetings via telephone conference call on January 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th. Um, on January 8th, I think this was reported last month, the ceremonial transfer of ownership the race water treatment plant from the Red Hook Commons Sewage Works Corporation to the village of Red Hook was held at the Red Hook Commons water treatment plant. And we had quite a turnout from <laughs> and um, the property owners at Red Hook Commons and Ed and I were there along with our engineers and attorneys. And we had a meeting on January 15th 
They discuss construction administration, sewer systems operation, water systems operations with our village engineer, Delaware Engineering. And we did review construction administration, the Red Hook sewer project, maintenance of the Red Hook wastewater treatment plant, um, suggestions to require sewer system operators, project engineers, and contractors to inspect and sign off on installation of mains, bottles, and tanks during construction, um, suggestions to require CT Mail, who is the engineer for our super project, to conduct weekly meetings with our engineers and contractors. Um, we also discussed the possibility of requiring additional grants or loan funding from the USDA in the event of construction bid exceeds the preliminary estimates. And we discussed sewer and water system operations involving the Reddit Village staff, consultants, and vendors regarding billings, repair, schedules, and maintenance. Uh, on this 22nd of January, we did have a conference call with our bond council to review procedures and timelines to the to amend the bond resolution in the event that the construction bid exceeds the estimated cost of construction and the amount of the original bond resolution, and also discuss the possibilities of establishing a bond anticipation note or ban to cover costs in excess of the original estimate of construction. On the 22nd as well, we did meet with um, our consultant, who is a financial planner, again, to go over some plans in, in anticipation or in the event that our bids come in and over budget. Um, so we had a nice talk with them, trying to prepare for what could come. On January 28th, we did, uh, we sent specifications for the required sign for the Reddick Sewer Project. We acquired from the USDA um, the names of federal, state, and local officials will be of current administrations as of January 20th, 2021. Um, on January 29th, we had a conference call to review the pre-bid meeting and contractual obligations of the select qualified low bidders regarding communications, notifications, and responsibilities. Um, the tentative date our timeline that we have for the sewer project is as follows. On January 18th, we did post the invitation to bid in the village's official newspaper and various trade publications. And to date, there were, actually there were 30 plan holders. We had 11 general contractors, 16 uh, prime electrical contractors, and six vendors. On February 5th, we did have a pre-bid meeting um, to review the protocol and the expectations of the project. On February 25th, 2021, will, bids will be open in the Red Hook Village building. On March 8th, the Village Board of Trustees will approve the qualified low bidder based on review of the bid documents by CT Mail. And in April 2021, upon further review of the documents and contractual agreements by Village Legal Counsel, the Board of Trustees will award the contract, sign contracts, and issue the notice to proceed. Um, construction is estimated to last between about an 18-month construction schedule, so construction can start in May or June. And um, we're anticipating final completion in December 20. 23, I believe it is, 2022. As far as the task force, both Charlie and I sit on the task force. Um, Four Corners Planning has revised the zoning documents for amendments to the town of Red Hook zoning code regarding the short-term rentals, or STRs. Copies will be forwarded to the task force members for final review. A meeting is tentatively scheduled in February with members of the task force in the Town of Red Hook Economic Development Committee to discuss the draft legislation and finalize the proposed language. After this final review, the draft zoning amendments will be sent to the Town Board for review, deliberation, public comment periods, and approval. In my last report, um, some of the committees that I sit on in the town have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and we had I've had no meetings for the Town of Reddick Zoning Review Committee, the Community Preservation Fund Advisory Board, Salt Hill Watershed Community, 
uh, the Town of Red Hook Local Water Revitalization Program, Northern Dutchess Alliance Executive Committee. Um, there's been no meetings. The current balance of the Community Preservation Fund, however, however, as of January 31st, is one million nine hundred seven thousand eighty-six dollars and fifty-one cents. And we've been seeing this number go up quite a bit and very rapidly over the course of this pandemic. Must be a lot of people moving in, and um, they're certainly building up that fund. The Village of Red Oak Zoning Review Committee, we had no meetings during the month of January. However, the um, proposed amendments of Chapter 200, which is the Code of Red, Village of Red Hook, are being worked on right now by the, um, by the attorneys and also the planners. So they're preparing the draft, the proposed legislation, secret documents, and Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development approval in accordance with New York State Statute 239. And that's all I have, Ed. Thank you, Brent. If I could just refocus the board back on the um, second page of Brent's uh, infrastructure report clip there. Um, a couple things I wanted to point out, plan our steps accordingly. Um, if we, on page two, we talked about on January 22nd, he and I and um, some others, we had a conference with um, Beth Ferguson of Fiscal Advisors. They're a capital consulting type firm that gives us input on bond repayment schedules and so forth. As everybody knows, the sewer project is funded by money with USDA, um, but even though it's low interest and long term, we the village still have to pay something back. Um, so we're working on, I think we could talk about it more at our workshop, but the underlying concept is when Brent gives the timeline for this completion of the construction, then there's a bit of time after that where we actually close with USDA. Uh, what that means is for those listening in the board, um, the construction money gets funded up to us by EFC at 0% interest. When it's all done and spent, we then close a loan with them by borrowing the money from USDA, USDA RD, and then we, at a certain point in the next coming fiscal year, have to start paying money back. And we're looking at when do we have our first payback sequences starting, and it's looking like December of 2023 timeframe, where we're gonna have to come up with a significant principal payment and some interest payment. So what I'd like to discuss, touch on it now, but more in the workshop, um, we'll have to consider a way to start developing a fund amount. So when that first number comes up, and I don't have it right in my head, but it's a significant number when you're borrowing three, was it 2.775 million over 38 years? Um, and so we'll, we know the number and it's it's about, I think $100,000 if I remember correctly on the print of it stuck in your head, but, um, but we, I'm looking for a way, we're gonna have to start developing and charging sewer customers some piece of money to get enough of a fund balance where we have it in our wherewithal to pay, make that first payment. Um, we were, I was playing with the numbers. It's, you're talking roughly 35 to $50 a month um, in that range. I'll bring more specific numbers to the board, you know, the workshop meeting, but it's something we have to think about because we can't be sitting there in two years and not having enough because not all the customers will have been turned on. It's going to be a gradual sequence of customers paying into the fund. So we're going to have to work on a, a plan, a mathematical plan to get there. Um, further down on that page, Brent mentioned the February 5 pre-bid meeting. That went really well. We had, I think he said, roughly 24 to 30 contractors on the phone with us. We laid out the highlights of why the village wants it, needs it, and what we're trying to do and how we need them to, whoever wins the bid has to guarantee they're gonna communicate with our people day in, day out, and we're stressing that a lot, as well as the importance of the project to the village. Um, so we, we had good luck with that. Um, Seems to be a lot of interest in the project. and Yeah, and um, the questions they asked were mainly focused on engineering questions, but uh, I was impressed by the the depth of knowledge the contractors seemed to possess as far as the skill sets they had and 
no more questions to ask. Uh, on a kind of lighter side of it all, we're in the COVID age. As much as it affects our meetings and public hearings, it also affects bid openings. Those that are familiar with the prior two we did, usually we sit here at the desk and the contractors out in the audience, they've run in with these huge bid packets that, you know, half an hour before the deadline on the bid opening date and uh, they sit here and they hang out and apparently it's like a, a part of the game. They, they want to hear the results right there almost immediately. Not that we know at that point the successful bidder, but at least they hear the numbers, what range the numbers are in. Um, so we think we have to come up with a way where they're going to drop off bids and I think we're going to take our PA system and put speakers out to our parking lot somehow and they can sit in their cars and sit six feet away on February uh, 2 5. Um, it'd be, could be a cold <laughs> bid opening session, but I don't want to be out there. We could sit in here and open them, and Lara will have to help us. There's a whole protocol. You read them, stamp them in, and it's, it's kind of a fun process for everybody. And we didn't realize how much the contractors really want to be here, so we're going to have to figure that out. So, um, so we got our work cut out for us in that world. But thank you, Brent. All right, I think what I'd like to do now is move to regular business. And as the board remembers and recalls, for probably the past six months, we've been looking at ways to reconfigure and redesign a different department, our water department. Um, what we've been working with is we have a water operator, which is VRI and local operators. And then we have an engineering firm and we had been moving for several years trying to develop in-house staff and strengths um, and that fell apart a bit on us about 18 months, two years ago. Um, but in the intervening six months since we've been kicking it around, we've come up with an idea and what Brent was talking about, we've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with Delaware Engineering, our highway department, ourselves and the board and some of our staff, our current staff. I wanna recommend and I think this will work we need to consolidate a point within our organization where certain things are best monitored and controlled, especially now, not only are we in the water department business, but we are now in a, the sewer department business. Um, granted, we have one customer that's Red Oak Commons, because when we took ownership of the plant, they still use that plant. They're our customer. We have to build them. We have to monitor any repairs, issues, and so forth. And it's really not a job for a mayor or a board member. It's something where it has to have a control point within the workaday schedule of a paid staffer. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna recommend, we've been working with Greg Stellaric here a year as a part-timer. He's in a slot with us within our organization where we can move him up to more hours. He's been doing 25 hours a week. And he's really taken to heart the task of all of the demands we make on him. And it's also, he's taken a keen interest in performance of the water department. And I'll be the first to admit, he's not a water operator, he's not a, uh, an engineer, but I think it can give us what we need in-house as a communication point and giving him more time will make it even stronger. What Brent and I worked out, and this will be part B of the topic here, we need Delaware Engineering to give us high level structure as far as maintenance and control planning, things we can task list and build, I'll call it war boards, whatever, you know, like something where these things stay in the forefront, keep everybody's attention, whether it be our highway department, the operators, us inside. Um, they've put together a package where they said they can do it for $1,850 a month and um, put that in your head. And we've tasked out what we need from them and what they can do for us. And then what I want to recommend here tonight too is uh, part of that process is move Greg. He's a 25 hour person now, move him to 35 hours, but not change our building open hours for two reasons. Well, with COVID, we just are not ready to take a lot of public in. And B, he can put more hours in but they would be what I would consider quiet time. They would be, he's not gonna be jumping up to sell garbage tags or answering the phone 
until 11 o'clock. You'll have hours in the morning to get specific things done on water. He's been running out lately. We're cross-checking some of our quarterly meter reads on some problem accounts. He's learned how to do all that. He's, like I said, he's taken a real incentive. I think he's earned the, the, uh, the ability and the right to do it with us right now. He fits in well with the rest of the staff. I won't go into too much more than that, but it's meaning, you know, other things could be executive session. But um, so I think we're at a point where we just have to do this. Um, there's no one, like I said, no one current staffer or board person that can spend the time and the money and the energy to just to be monitoring now a huge department. You know, it's, if you take the budget of water over 520,000 and sewage 222 when it's fully run, so it's about a three quarter million dollar department with things that can go south pretty quickly, especially when we're in the non-clean water world of sewage. It's uh, something where we need to work. So what I'm putting forth is I'd, I'd like to move to agree to have Delaware, Engin Delaware Engineering formally involved with us. <clears throat> We've always been in the background on an hourly. We're trying to get some consistent amount where they have direct consulting access to us as a board and our people and then um and then earmark or tag greg as the main point of contact who would then within our within our organization keep control of whether it be the software changes that we need to do sewer uh we're gonna need we have consistently problematic water billing issues uh water meter issues um just different little things that I, we need somebody focused, like I keep saying, and he's willing to do it. I've talked to him. What I did on a bigger picture since COVID, the, the water budget is outperforming our projections right now. Um, so it's showing the ability because moving him to full time, it's another 10 hours a week, and then he would qualify for the healthcare benefits we provide. But he's a single person and the way our contracts work with union, we mimic that with non-union. They pay 10% of their premium themselves. So um, we would have to work that into the, the, the plan. But I, like I keep saying, it's we've been looking at it, looking for options. I think this will get us what we need. And um, I think he'd be the right person for the job. So um, I would move for some more discussion, but that we retain Delaware Engineering to give us an, an annual consulting access, but with a monthly rate of $1,850. And at the same time, move um, Greg Stellark, who fits into our civil service plan. He can do this from 25, 20 to 25 hours a week to 35 hours a week um, without changing our office hour operations. And the changes, the funding would come from the water budget. So I would move in that direction and ask for a second for some discussion. Second. Yeah. And I'd like to offer some discussion too as far as um, you know, the need to have Delaware Engineering involved or our engineering company. They prepare a list of, of hydrant flushing, valve exercising, determining the process of fixing leaks once they're detected, to help us prevent what had happened last week. Um, a little bit better and controls at our pump field and also take that same expertise that they have and apply it to the sewer system, which they're we're brand new in this whole field. There's going to have, to, there's a lot of maintenance involved um, just to check the tanks, the pumps, make sure they're all operational outside of the normal day, day out operations of the treatment plant. So um, they do bring to the table expertise in water and sewer. And I, I work with Greg at the office and he seems to be very thorough and knowledgeable of, of the administration part. And it would be good to have one point person to address all these questions and put them down the line as we, as we need. So I think it's a good, good suggestion. Ed. Yeah, we've been working and thinking about it and um, we're growing up and it's, we got two big departments and like I said, you have to interact with the software company, this or that, the meter company. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. He doesn't need to know how to fix a broken pipe, but there's a lot going on. And um, it would be a good 
good good thing for all of us, I think, including him. Um, so, can I just ask a quick question? We haven't had a, a real budget meeting yet. Um, so I, nothing against Greg or, or whatever. I'm just trying to figure out big picture. How does this fit into our whole big picture of the budget and the tax cap and, and having someone now be full time? Are we able to use that it would go under the water budget? But are, do we can, we, can we afford it basically is, is what I'm saying big picture wise. Yeah, well, I think water, uh, not making a pun, but of all, all our funds is the most liquid by that I mean we get to build quarterly and with the increase um, what we're seeing that COVID consumption, you know, I've had pulled the four past quarters and we're trending about 15% more than our budget proje projections in revenue. Um, and then uh, let me rephrase that, it's more like 10% more, but it's a significant number. And I see that bump up as able to pay both aspects, the engineering and the increased costs. Um, is the water fund subject to the tax cap? No, and that's, I think where Brent is headed. Um, if when COVID ends, if water billing slash consumption drops, the board, we would have to consider what we need to do. Uh, yeah, but right now the numbers are okay. Um, the, the part B of that is um, we got to do what we got to do. You know, it's like, it's, um, I think the recourse would be that, you know, if we had to make a slight increase in the water rate, um, we have, we need to have more coordination in house. And you know, right now we, we have repair numbers. We have a lot of details built into the water rate. We're just growing up and uh, he'll also be right now, like we said before, there's no actually operational sewer revenue stream right now but um that's something we'll have to think about in a workshop too because some of the work will be sewer work we'll be developing the as they keep saying the software the billing the a lot of work's going to happen and you know it's still probably 18 months out where the heavy lifting starts on sewer but right now we have a customer and we have a plant and we have to deal with the operators and the dec for instance today i wrote to our water operator who is also our sewer operator I was thinking, gee, you know, we get the water report every month. I kind of think there should be a sewer report we should be looking at here in our packet right now. And, Absolutely. Uh, and yep. I reminded them, but it's not there. Um, we'll get there. It's a, but it's things like that, you know, like, and the good part is Delaware has an office right here in Red Hook. Um, so they can interact even in COVID era. They could sit in the, you know, they, they can talk and interact on the phone, of course, always, but even they could have meetings on the cable somewhere and different things where they're working together. So, um, but they, were, they were very handy for the water main break. Yeah, it was good to have the higher level because we didn't know what we were facing at first. And um, so we had. Ed, Brent, is, is, will the sewer, is the sewer fund also independent of the tax cap? Yes. I presume so, right. Yeah. Okay. Operations, user, user, user paid operations. And that's by design because when we built the sewer concept, it was on purpose. We didn't want to tax everybody in the village for 135 benefited properties. So it's, uh, so, <laughs> so it's funded by its own benefited users. Anyway, so Jennifer, a good point. Brent, thank you. Any other discussion? I would, um, for this one, I'll do a roll call. So I know, Lara, I see your face there. So it's to bring Delaware in at 1850 a month. Um, Greg in to full time with the re requisite um, healthcare package. Um, so we have a motion and a second. I'll vote yes. Um, Mr. Noonan? Yes. Uh, Mr. Kowalczyk? Yes. Uh, Mr. Lang? Aye. And Ms. Norris? Yes. Okay. I put A's for I. Um, all right, thank you. Um, let's see, another piece of business here. This is one driving us all nuts, but uh, our infamous RRFBs, 
I think the last time we did a resolution on this was one that's a template maintenance agreement that the state of New York gives us from DOT. And we did it back September -ish last year. And then I circulated something here January, early February, where the local DOT, DOT person said, oh, she now has a different form of the maintenance agreement. Please do that. So we had council look at it. There's no material change. Um, there were some minor changes, but in essence, we knew we wanted solar. We didn't want them put in hardwired, and we agreed that we would maintain the battery packs and the systems, the solar part of the system, and essentially we maintain that rigid metal pole that sits there um, going forward. Uh, not too much can happen to the pole, but uh, then you can't say that because one got knocked over at the school, but fortunately it got reinstalled by the contractor. Um, I did circulate the resolution. We gave it a number two for 2021. Um, because if you look at the maintenance agreement from the state, there's an appendix B or C that says the appropriate resolution was passed. So I just couldn't use the one from September 2020, rather. Um, so, so I think I, I would like to encapsulate it, short form it. Like I said, we did circulate it. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas is they say where the individual poles are, they cite different OT contract and uh, different numbers there. Um, as Charlie, we knew the definition early on, rectangular rapid flashing beacons, that's the RRFB we're talking about. Um, it says um, the, the key component is the village of Reddock shall maintain, repair, and energize such pedestrian crosswalk lighting and be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Red Hook authorizes Mayor Edward Blundell, the village, to enter into and execute an agreement with the State of New York and through the Commissioner of Transportation to commit the village to maintain, at its own expense, the lighting system on the above identified project. Such agreement to provide that the maintenance shall include the repair and replacement, replacement of equipment and the furnishing of electric current for the system, which essentially means batteries. Um, and we're directed to transmit five certified copies to the state DOT. Um, Lara has a copy. We called it resolution number two. I um, filled it out a little bit, thinking our infrastructure trustee, Deputy Mayor Kowalczyk, would be more than willing to second, um, presupposing that. We can always change that if he's not. But what I'm, I'd like to move that we adopt resolution number two, which is essentially updating September 2020 resolution where the village agreed to um, maintain the RRFBs built and constructed by the state of New York. We welcome that project and we've attached you know, the five copies of the agreement are in the, been circulated. Um, Essentially, we desire to have solar, and they're saying, yeah, you could have them, but you change the batteries. And uh, you know, the downside is if somebody hit them, I would try, if somebody did the total damage to the thing, I would put it into our insurance company and try to get reimbursed that way. Or odds are if somebody hits them, we could collect from their insurance company. So it's, I think we're really buying into the obligation to maintain and monitor the batteries. Um, so I would offer a motion that we adopt resolution number two of 2021 to maintain the highway signals, RF, RFEs as outlined. And um, is there a second? I'll second again. Okay. Any other discussion? Until January 12th of 2046. Yeah, it's a 25 <laughs> We're committed. Years. Yeah, yeah, it's a, I don't know how long. Um, That's scary. Yeah, no, it's 25 years. It'll light the flying cars that go by. <laughs> the technology will change by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll next year. <laughs> yeah, we have a motion and a second. Uh, I'll do a roll call so it makes sense. I'll vote yes. I, Mr. Kowalczyk. Yes. Mr. Lang. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. And Mr. Noonan. Yes. Thank you, guys. Yes, let's have it. Hope we don't have to do it again. <laughs> I was getting thicker with 
Um, this hasn't been a real fast project, even though we had a fast <laughs> grant for it. Make fun of it before, now it won't go away. So, geez. Um, all right, let's see. All right, we touched on budget talks a couple ways in different form, forms of discussion tonight, but um, the board members, other than Will, the ones that have been here for a while will recall, we generally spend a lot of time in a workshop on the budget. Um, this year we've got a lot going on uh, with other projects and we have the COVID, so we can't do that great informal get together we usually do. What I'm envisioning us doing is I'll circulate a spreadsheet that you're all familiar with that modeling spreadsheet and um, we can work it ourselves a little bit. And then right now we're looking at February 25 as our planned meeting where I can put it up on, I can share screens and we can pick around and make comments and make the changes. Like all of our other projects, we do have deadlines to get it done by that are written in law. It's not our choice. We'll work on that. But part of it is right now the good news is it's seeming to come together within the tax cap, which is the inauspicious low amount of 1.31%, which I think I calculated was the new $16,000 we can play with. The good side is we're generating pretty decent revenue off our cell tower rentals. And it's not big money, but we also rent out now the top of our well fields to the solar project. You know, it's not a huge amount of money, but it helps. Um, there are some parts that are shrinking. Um, you know, with COVID, port operations and so forth have diminished. But, um, but right now, it's looking like we can stay within the cap, but we always give ourselves this protective step where we pass a tax cap override. It's actually called a local law. So because it's called local law, you have to do a public hearing if you touch on the words of local law. So I'd like to announce um, for our March 8th meeting that we'll have 7 p.m. public hearing for the tax cap override motion. And then all things, if everything goes well, when we actually adopt the budget, we rescind that override permission yeah. we gave ourselves. Ed, Ed, I have a question. Um, no changes to the tax cap requirements, you know, because of COVID and stress on municipalities or anything? No, oddly, no. Um, wow. Yeah. 1.31%, you know, the state is hoping with the new federal administration, they get a chunk of money back. Right, and the city is too. Yeah, but um, no, no, no allowances of okay. time or any, 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 uh, any slack. And um, good question also. Um, so anyway, I move that we set a public hearing. It's not complex, it's not a big deal. Um, um, and we always hope, but anyway, set it for 7 p.m. March 8th to uh, deal with the tax cap override local law. Um, the clerk will be directed to notify the paper of record and so forth. And we do have, we do this every year. So, um, and uh, we work every year also to stay within the cap and rescind the, the action. So I'd move, is there a second? Second. Was that you? Um, it was. And then, uh, any other discussion? We kind of got into discussion before we, I think. All right, Blundell, I'll vote yes. Norris? Yes. Uh, Kowalchuk? Yes. Uh, Lang? Aye. And Noonan? Noonan. Noonan. Mr. Noonan, are you out there? Did you vote? Sorry, I keep putting my mute off. Um, okay. Aye. Okay, thank you. I mean, what's the, um, Lang gives us the Scots version of an I. What's the- Oh, well, that wasn't the Scots version. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, he swallowed it or something. Yeah. Let's see. The last thing I have on business business is um, as much as we want to improve Red Hook, whether it be the environment, uh, social contract and all those things that that's the task of this board um, we're looking at another green innovation grant program sounds a little better than it is though it's it's actually to do with our water department we're talking with our engineers um, it's 
there's a new grant has to be filed by February 12. We've got the legwork done. I just want to let everybody know. We're looking at um, so the key components are, like I said, in the water world, believe it or not, even though we did our water phase one improvement project going to radio read meters, the technology is moving to sell. And um, we're looking as part of the grant to get um, a conversion option to head to sell. And then um, some other projects, some other components. It's about 425,000 was it print? It was, um, it's, you wanna talk about some components there? There was a few other things we were trying to do as part of it, not just change the meter heads, but um, um, so we get ourselves in a running. Um, essentially, it's designed to try to save energy is one of the components of what they call a green innovation grant program. Um, so we're thinking that we can get our meter program up to state of the art, even though we thought we were, um, and then protect more steps to protect our aquifer. And um, it's it's designed and ready to go. Um, I just have to think in a day or two is a digital filing where they click some buttons and uh, we ship it. Is this, is this part of the consolidated funding application, or is this just the EFC? Um, this one, I don't know if I can share my screen. Um, I know we applied for this last time, and I, I don't know if it was part of the CFA or... Yeah, I'm looking for Robert's emails. It was um, GIGP. Um, in my mind, it goes to WIA, but it's... Um, that's not we, uh, it'd be through the, the drinking water. Yeah. Um, evolving fund or. Yeah, well. We is on hold right now, but anyway, yeah. I'm just curious if it was part of CFA. The, but. the project, at, at our urging, the, the engineers wrote up what they thought could qualify. Um, so we'll see if we get it. If we don't file it, we don't get it. Uh, meaning if we're not in the running, we don't get it. And I'm not totally convinced we'll get it. They've indicated, you know, it's there's places that are not as modern as we are in our operation, and they thought the state might go that direction more than looking at us again. But we try to keep our name in there, and uh, so I, I think it's worth going for it. And Brent, I think you and I were communicating about, you know, it's it's worth doing. So uh, what do you think? But it's not it's not a hundred percent of the total cost. It's seventy five percent. So the village would still have an obligation. Yeah some way so this this is the first step and seeing if we can get we always try to get as much as we can so what the heck yeah and, um, so i would just like the board's authorization we got the application written with the assistance of delaware and um between now and the 12th we have to click the send uh, button up to the agency taking the application so um i would move that we do it Mr. Brent, are you seconding seconding that? I sure do. Okay. And I would any other discussion, thoughts? I would vote call to vote. I'll vote yes. I Ms. Norris. Yes. Uh Mr. Kowalchuk. Yes. Mr. Lang. Aye. And Mr. Noonan. Aye, yes. Okay. Crank through the Items I had in regular business, anything from um, the board in and of yourselves individually that you need to talk about or bring up? Are, are we meeting Thursday at all? Mm. Uh, this like two days from now? The 11th. Yeah. I have nothing booked, scheduled. Oh, good, because I'm, I'm on this routine, like Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, uh, Thursday. We, we skipped to the 18th for the follow-up to the police reform project and then we skipped to 25 for budget and then 8 March for um, the next regular monthly meeting so that's what I got booked in bright red and on my um, ring central world Good. we are working on a way I've been the one that can set up ring central meetings we're getting Lara authorized so she can do her PB and her ZBA meetings so we don't have the same snag that we hit for I think our January that one police reform project meeting where we booked two meetings the same night. We knew we did it. We thought we could do it. Turned out we couldn't, but um, 
So we'll get Lara that. I think maybe tomorrow she'll sit and train up on how to get that so she can do her own meetings. Um, we have a section for general public comment, which would be, I'm not sure who's out there. I see some names still out there. Anybody in the listening audience that has general public comment about Village of Red Oak issues, ideas, and so forth? I don't have my administrative assistant, so this time you can unmute yourself and just say, hello, Ed, and you can talk if you're out there. We're here, but I don't think we have any comments. Okay, just... Uh, but thanks for asking. Okay, I'm glad you're still there. Um, what I thought, as part of the night, we talked about finances and we have to pay bills. The numbers Ray mentioned were 220 something thousand dollars. As, as a quick aside, um, as part of my establishment of the budget and so forth, I get every employee's W-2s and it's amazing what our little local government puts into the local economy. The, the, the gross payroll is about 775,000 that we push. And when you think of it, it really goes right, pretty much back to Red Hook. You know, most of the people live in and right around Red Hook. Um, very few travel too far to get here. Um, and then when you think that's just the payroll part of what we do, and then when we buy parts and pipes and equipment and vehicles, oftentimes that's somewhat local too. So a lot of our, we're probably one of the bigger economic drivers here for uh, the village, village economy and the regional economy. But with that in mind, we have to pay those bills and uh, Mr. I guess well, I'll make the motion that we pay bills off after audit and like I said everybody's been through them they're all signed so Ray can mail the checks tomorrow uh, I move that we do that is there a second? second second and unfortunately I'll do the roll call again Blundell yes Norris yes uh, Kowalchuk aye bang we oh. <laughs> oh man uh, Noonan, in Espanol, por favor. Si. Okay. Um, so we're good. And then, uh, unless any board member sees something we missed or need to do, I would ask that the deputy mayor review things and make his customary next step. I would like to make a motion that we adjourn this evening's meeting. I will second that. And I think we can do that by just raise your hands. I think we all agree. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.